as much as we all want a solution to but until the situation improves what should the citizens be doing how should they conduct themselves well you see the the problem especially with these uh, kidnaps in the north is that the people are not organized so to speak they don't have a structure like when you talk of Boko Haram so it's difficult to deal with the problem has come to stay with us and until it is properly addressed I think the best advice is what do you do in case you become a victim because everybody's not a, big, a, a potential target what do you do at any given time if you become a victim now I think uh, we, I need to give some tips and have it from my own experience because these people who are doing this they're not entirely illiterate they operate in gangs they have their own network they have their intelligence they have the operational uh, group they have uh, people who feed them technical support so it's not something that some say even medical support oh yes so it's not something you you toy with but in the interim when uh, you become a victim and i think it's important to that parents or people who are watching should educate their people remain calm when you are kidnapped remain calm even don't the, try to escape to do. Don't try to escape because that will be the greatest. That's why you see most of the deaths. Some of the deaths arise from people trying to escape. So don't try to escape. Remain calm. Obey all the instructions. Because yeah, they, 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 are, they, they are also very, very intelligent. They use their phones and they try as much as possible to make your negotiators not be hostile to them. People who are negotiating on your behalf should be professionals in terms of addressing them because there are certain things you will say and they get infuriated. Because I know that before then, before your unfortunate incident, and yes. thankfully you, uh, you escaped, you got off, you were saying at that time, don't pay ransom. Oh, yes. That had been my position that I shouldn't pay ransom. But uh, they say, he who fights and runs away <laughs> lives to fight another day. It's only when you are alive that you can recount what actually happened. I used to, before then, say best practices, don't pay ransom, because if you pay ransom, you encourage them. But you know that life is sweet. So if you say, if I say don't pay ransom, and you, you die out of hunger, or they just kill you, nobody will be there to tell the story. So why we are not encouraging payment of ransom? You know the best way to come out of captivity. So try as much as possible. Their negotiators should be professional. And uh, they'll tell you not to get the police involved. Oh. There's nothing you do that they will not tell you. If you get police involved, they know. But how, Mr. Alibi, how did they get to know? Did they have moles in, in the police? Uh, not, only po not, not, not necessarily moles in the police. They also have their network. They monitor, for instance, if... If they have this Akambo, they have, they have a victim being kept or held hostage. They also have people who, who they plant a very location to monitor who is coming. Understand? They, have, they, have, they also get intelligent information about the entire environment. They look, they watch out. And they watch out to see whether they, they, the police have been informed, what is going to be respond and so forth. You see, the issue of not just, not just we willing to pay ransom or we negotiating with the, we're negotiating with the kidnappers, the point is that we we'll also look at the causal factors of this problem. You know, they, they, they say prevention is better than cure. What are we doing to prevent this? In terms of our moral values, in terms of uh, equipping, equipping the security agency to actually adequately fight and checkmate these criminal activities, in terms of applying technology, what stops us from at least mounting, mount, mounting CCTVs in various locations? That's the, the citizens themselves. Or, no, no, that's both the governance. In the, yes, the citizens. It, what happened in, what happened in, in, in uh, I think, uh, in the U.S., when there was that blast, when there was no one, this uh, kidnapping incident, it was something that was planted in a restaurant that was using then those two suspects. Not, not the government city. Yeah, but, but it, it, it can be law. 
For you to have any business in Nigeria, you must establish put an end to the CCTV. You know, it will make the citizen to contribute towards crime prevention and crime detection. Not, not that one is trying to sound negative about all of that because look, we need solutions to this problem. This but part of the solution. The, 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 the challenge concerning some of these things, which we brushed before we went to the break, is that I don't think there's any citizen who doesn't want to volunteer information to help the police. I don't think so. But no. that's why I said. Are there things that can be done without us necessarily hopping on pumping more funds? Much as, yes, we need to pump more funds for security agencies. The police get in the confidence of the citizenry, for instance. That doesn't take that much fun to do that. I agree. I agree. You see, you need, you need, you need, you need to, like, when I was in service, I tell my officers, when I was CPF City Police Command, I tell them, as you want your people to be policed in your village, as you want your sister and brother to, your sister and brother to be policed in your village or community, that's why you should police people of Abuja. Where we are, I am the CP. Because the only you're supposed to be brutalized, the only you're supposed to, the only you're to be extorted, the only you're supposed to, to, be, to be killed by criminals, you don't, then you do it the same here. It is that, that orientation, orientation is capacity through training and capacity building. You don't train without funds. You, you don't train funds with training. You have to go get resource persons, get material, and so forth. It's training, orientation, perception uh, determines uh, attitude. Speaking about perception, for yes. instance, when you talk about people putting CCTVs and volunteering that information to security agencies, do they know, or isn't it would, it, would it be, wouldn't it be nice for the police to let them know that if you provide certain footage, because I mean, sometimes yeah. you don't even get to hear the, those authorities demand those footages to help out. How soon, how quick do we have the database? Do we have the architecture to match those visuals that you've seen to identify the people? That's what, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying, it is systemic, it's structural. The system itself has not been able to provide the enablement, the enablement to be able to, to be able to detect be able to store information, be able to allow this footage you talk about, and when it, because this footage can also be tendered as, as evidence in court, it can be used as evidence in court. But the point is, the government actually has not come out sincerely. I know the com government has a lot of competing, competing uh, needs. That's why I want to pray the, the eight, outgoing eight, uh, at National Assembly to speed up, step up action on the police trust fund, which, which is already on the making now, and the bill is on, in the process, which I, ha I happen to be one of those who need to defend the bill, so I was invited there. I think they can do that. It will be a milestone contribution, oh. because the government now will be, they, it will be an, a very a, a alternative funding for the police, and it also enables them to contribute towards the security of that well, country. You know, Mr. Jeffrey, there was something you said, um, which was that where at the point, I think at the point that you were kidnapped or so, there were, it was about 100 meters or so meters away from a checkpoint. I've heard some government officials say this behind the scenes as well, that look, what do you do? Where, when most of the time, all of those cases of kidnapping happen not too far away from those checkpoints. What do we do with those checkpoints then? Yeah, you see, that's the, that's the point I made before. That we need to have patrol. Because they know that police, military are stationed in particular places. So they choose where to strike from. So we, we, we don't need all those uh, checkpoints. And if we, it's so sad, it's heartbreaking, you know, when you drive on that road. See the way they extort money from the people. I'm, draw, I'm drawing the attention of police authority to do something, especially between that, uh, and between that uh, Okene and uh, Auchi. And at the same time, you see still kidnap going on in those areas. So we need to change our strategies. You see, we, like what I was saying before, let us not be crying over our spilled milk. How do we move forward? You see, until then, it, time will not permit me to begin to give all the tips, you know. But it's important too that when you are taking hostage, you should be able to control yourself. Stop being emotional. I'm the only son. I'm the only uh, father of my... You raise your stake higher. When you, when you give them that information. Yes. You raise your stake higher. Because they know, yeah, my wife is pregnant. I am. Uh, who is who is interested? So, so what out do you of do? emotion, out of emotion, people say a lot of things, giving out information. So remain calm. Don't be emotional. Perhaps they're trying to appeal to the emotions of the people who are kidnapped them. So That's for, if they have emotions. For, for instance, when you say my wife is pregnant, <laughs> you know, perhaps it, we have seen know. situations where. Uh, you know, some some people lose their spouses while they are still in captivity, and it's a very uh, worrying situation. Perhaps the the spouses themselves cannot handle the tension. They they, they have a target. It's their the target trauma. is to collect money, and their target is to make the maximum benefit from that situation. Yeah, the question is, what do you also tell the families? I mean, that is when you have been kidnapped. 
What about before you? Before no, not when I'm kidnapped. I've been kidnapped. I won't be kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> not you, definitely not you. What I mean, I'm so sorry, if you're misreading me. I mean, when anyone is before anyone is kidnapped, we're not praying that anybody be kidnapped. But yes. what can you do to prevent it? Is there anything? Are there tips that you give to people to? You oh know, yes. For, for vigilance. And oh yes. Of the oh sort. yes. Uh, vigilance, like my own. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you outright. I, I wasn't uh, very conscious of what was happening. I asked my driver to park because I was uh, actually doing something. So when you are traveling, you remain focused. Look at the road when you are traveling. Is any vehicle following me for some time? If vehicle is not following you, just look. You can see, you can maneuver out. But I fact asked my driver to park because I was hearing gunshots. I thought it was, uh, you know, my tire. You know, they fire rapidly to scare you to stop. But because I wasn't looking straight, so when you are traveling, you concentrate and look at where you are going to, to avoid all these things. You can, you can maneuver. But, uh, you know, with that God. That is when you are traveling. What about the ones that happen within cities, metropolises, I mean, in Lagos? In, no, no, uh, that, in that's Abuja. what I'm saying, that yeah. time will not permit us. You see, there are areas, Mr. Alobi can tell you, the safety measures in your house, in your office, yes, give us on the road. Let's take the ones that time can permit us to take. Well, if I begin to give that one, and then I'll be out of job. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pay for it. It's professionally. Okay, for but, it. but 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 uh, uh, Mr. Lobby, you can't give some. I mean, the yes, police. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because we'll always call the police at any yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, because see, when one see, is kidnapped, the first thing is you want to call the police. Yeah, you see, one thing, and what I think they should do is that the police should make those emergency numbers available to the public, and they should so be they should be respond team. Response team and the speed, the speed, the time of response is, is a critical. Response, okay. Response, uh, yeah. response team, response that is to this test call. And then when, if, when, for instance, you are moving, like Mike said, if you are moving, be security conscious. You see a car coming after you. First of all, we pick the number of the, the station number of the vehicle, the color of the vehicle, make of the vehicle. If you are on free, can phone, can phone a police station. This also car is being, being trailed by so-and-so so, car, so-and-so -so number, so-and-so -so location. At least they will also have the confirm the control room, control with the money, with the information, bad information, security information to all the patrol teams. And like I said, this static static roadblock is not too helpful. But motorized patrol, stop and search, because the criminals are also monitoring the movement of the security agency, the police. They monitor and know what time they come and how many number of number of persons and then how 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 are they armed and so forth. They study them, and then but now they have kind of. Uh, this uh, motorized mobile patrol, they cannot predict where they will meet you. Stop and search. And the citizens themselves should also submit themselves to, to be humble and willing to cooperate with the police. When they say stop, or somebody to stop you, be willing to let them search you. And the police should have, if roadblocks are checked, stop and search are done thoroughly, they really ought to be done. It will prevent crime. Yeah, but that's the problem. Yeah. How do we then ensure that the police don't abuse that? Because the reason why some people would not want to stop or they are usually immediately angry when they are stopped by police, they start asking you, where's the receipt of your laptop? Those, those kind of questions. No, that is required, like I said, training, training and supervision. So, they, 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 again, officers should not just, should not be armchair officers. I mean, that is your day in the office, and find out what their men are doing. Police the police, I police my police officers. You must police know what they are doing, because then you may be able to take the standard of what you want. So, I think supervision is very key. And again, the, the more, those, those, those core values of the policy are not, I've actually been eroded in the Nigerian police force, I can say, without the convocation. Those core values, the core values of discipline, core values of professionalism, and I'm happy that the new IG is trying to, yeah. to reinvent and restore that. And like I said, they're going to restore the Lord's glory. So I think it is all about training, commitment, dedication. You know, this is, doing the job if you, not just putting money first. If you put money first, if you don't see the money, you get frustrated. But if you put efficiency and effectiveness and result oriented, you are committed, you want to serve, put in your best effort, and of course, the society should also appreciate you. But when you put in your best and society does not appreciate you, everything is blame, 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 blame. Blame, blame does not solve problem. What is solution? What, do we, what can we do? What can we contribute? Both the government, the citizens, and the, the police themselves, and all security agencies, what can we do to make things better, make this country safe and secure? Okay, Mr. Lobby, uh, Mr. Yofo said the other time that the, these kidnappers are sometimes very intelligent and they also have their own intelligentsia, so to speak. Uh, how is, is there a way that the police can match that or even surpass it? Because one would expect that the security agency should be ahead of the crime. Yeah, like I said, 
policing and security today in the 21st century is technically, technically driven, technician based, and knowledge based. And to do that, they can, search, they can have a system where they can at least hack onto such, such, such uh, any kind of any old system. Like with, the, with the network system, they can have with the, any, any call, anything, they can hack on that. If they can have that, it all requires funding. For you to have equipment, technology that be able to fight crime effectively, it requires funding, not just mere wishes. You know, you know when don't, don't, we don't we're just trying to wish this, let us do, the government should invest, invest heavily. That's why I'm appealing to the National Assembly, the police trust fund. If that police trust fund is passed, today in Nigeria, the most, the most funded uh, state is Lagos State. Why? Because they, they, they have a security trust fund. All organizations contribute part of their percentage profit to that, that fund. It minimizes the burden on the, on, the, on the government. So if that trust fund is being passed by the National Assembly, it will be a milestone contribution to our security architecture in this country. And again, the citizens should know that they also have a duty to contribute to the well-being of the... They are the prime beneficiary of a safe environment. Citizens that they want to, to benefit when the security society is safe and secure. And when the society, society when there's no security, they want, they want to suffer. So they therefore incubate on them in level of section 24 of the constitution to assist with agency to come out and the police themselves should make them worthy, worthy of the trust of the citizens. Sometimes some of these security um, um, challenges are not in city centers. They are in the hinterlands. They are in the, you know, the, the villages, the, the remote, remote communities. Uh, how do we deal with those ones? It is every citizen's consciousness, consciousness. It goes back to the question of trust that we raised the other time. Uh, clearly, the police, from what you have also said, has, has uh, needs to do a lot, you know, to restore that police. Because that's, that's I agree with you. That is absolutely issue. correct. You need to, you know, and that can only be done through training, training, motivation. For instance, when I was a police constable, when we go on patrol, we were being given ration. We were being given allowances. In fact, then when I was in mobile, if you give me money, bribe with the pile on checkpoint, we actually wanted to do frog jump. We chew the actually chew the money. You know, because we see that as it is it, it for us it is it is a, it's a, it, it's not acceptable to our, our professional standard. But now it it doesn't it's no longer like that because the site itself promotes that. Because the policeman is on on, on twenty four duty is not being, being an allowance. He's there he doesn't know how to feed and so forth. It provides enablement. You know, master in terms of motive, which talks about you have the physiological need, the needs of the person. When he meets his need, he will motivate, you can give his life. You know, but when it's not that, it's not being taken care of. So I think the government should vote adequate funding, and the police institution should also ensure that their welfare, their men is critical and key, should be the first thing uh, they should be concerned with. Okay, while we're winding that message for, is it possible to get an idea into the mindset of some of these kidnappers while uh, you experience them? Yeah, well, they are, they, they are human beings. Uh, they have feelings. I was with them for four days. They live normal life. They have emotions. At times they begin to uh, discuss with you as normal human beings. And uh, they might say they are normal human beings. So you deal with them as you deal with any other human being. But don't forget that they are armed and they can snap at any given time. So I think uh, we need to sensitize our people we need to, people need to be security conscious in their houses, offices, on the road, everywhere. You need but to be very security What do you think, I mean, from, your, from what you saw, what, what did you think emboldened them to keep going at what they were doing? Well, so some of them are on drugs. Some of them are on drugs. Uh, some of them just, uh, it's not everything we, you know, we, we discuss on air. Uh, they have backings. They don't operate them on their own. They get arms from uh, sources that needs to be investigated and uh, identified. So this is like an industry. Oh yes. So if you get arms, you need to pay for those arms of from course. the monies they get. Because they do pay with AK-47, pump action, all kinds of uh, arms, and uh, you know, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very big challenge. But I think on a final note, I think the government should come out to change tactics possibly reject the security architecture. This is a second term for the president, and uh, he has no excuse not to succeed. And if you fail on security, then you fail in everything. Mr. Olivia, you I know see, you talked about fund, but go ahead. Yeah, you see, again, our values, the moral values, the national orientation, what are they doing? To inculcate values in the citizens, to know that the culture of obedience to the, obedience to the law, the culture of moral values, the culture of shame, 
the culture of fear of shame, fear of God. We don't have that any longer. I think the challenge is the culture of survival is primary it, to many is, people. It is because survival in the sense that the system itself is def de lamentably defective. If the system is caring system, our leaders, most of our political politicians are not there to empower people, not there to, to make to the, the, the happiness and good of all, concerned with myopic, only concerned with so to optimize by materialism, money to grab money and power. You know, they're not there to think about service. Life is all about service. We're in this room now, we're enjoying free oxygen. We're not paying anything to God. Life is all about service. Leadership is all about service. But the leaders are not all thinking about service. On to be to inculcate those values that being of the true nature of the God in us, to be to show service, to be able to show those attributes, even the religious institution, talk about um, um, uh, um, uh, that prosperity, um, uh, breakthrough, no, nobody talks about v moral values and, um, and, and, and virtues. These are the things that makes all the true human being in us. So I think national orientation should carry out this program. The government should say about this. People need to know. You see, when I read the, the Animal Farm by George Orwell, it is true this kind of orientation that involves animals rose up against Jones in the farm. Orientation, let them be that thinking, perception, attitude. Let them have the new orientation. All Nigerians need to be orientated to think, how can I do, what can I do to live a life that is worthy in the sight of God? A life that will make me be a useful children to my country, useful children to my country. A life that can contribute. A life that can at least, you see, when we're in this world, we are preparing for the next world. Let Sorry, Mr. Adobe, this yeah. orientation you're talking about, yeah. is it so that the kidnappers will be everybody yes you can change attitude they can change attitude and the, when the government you see perception you think that government. in a place where we don't catch those people and where there is no consequences for action anybody's going to it's change all, it's going to be holistic national orientation i've said the military the police and the other should be well funded should be well trained and equipped and motivated that is and also the moral values too should be should be revamped re, re, and re, and re in the country we don't have moral values any longer but the lead and the lead, we don't have it. It is, it is, it is, we are bastardized. We are morally bankrupt. And again, you see, man is both a material and spiritual being. We emphasize, we emphasize on our material nature and the, and the emphasis on our spiritual nature. We talk about the spirituality, it's all about the fear of God, the fear of shame. But how much importance does the police give to response time, which you were trying to talk about previously? It's very important. In fact, <coughs> it all depends on one, the type of vehicle they have, the type of manpower they have. And how in terms of communication they have, you know, have, because you need to get the information and you respond to the information. How the street vehicle you have and location and where it is. Again, again, another problem again is that our our our, our society is not even well planned. Sometimes they say this stress call from a particular to locate the place is a challenge that this is not known, you know. So they also straighten planning to is another way that can also help in checking. It, it's it's like it, it's the holistic approach to the whole problem. Do we have enough policemen? We don't have assets, so grossly, grossly inadequate. In Nigerians were about 200 million. We have less than 4,000 policemen, 400,000 policemen. It's grossly inadequate. That's why I said, I want to appeal to Mr. President, his own tenure. Let him ensure that we at least recruit more than 50,000 policemen within these four years. But that is one. That the last election, like, like it, it is a social fact, a notorious fact that the last election, last election was, was, was militarized. To minimize that, check that. If you have adequate policemen and we arm them with communication, even even if policemen doesn't carry arm, they can carry walking talking in the police in the police station. If anything can communicate to the, the standby patrol team that can respond. These are all things they need to do. You see, so it is it is they, we don't we are grossly inadequate, we ill equipped, ill funded, ill trained, but ill motivated. It's, it's, not, it's not a hopeless situation. It's, it's uh, hopeless <coughs> at the moment. We are trying to trying to rationalize. No, it's hopeless. No, because I mean, if you if you say it's hopeless, it's uh, it's a different kettle of fish entirely. Because it as is, we, as it is now, there are things that we can do to still ensure that we get results. Yeah, because we have refused to do what ought to do. That's why I say it is what we have That's, that's to what do. the security agencies or both or the, the government, now. the citizens, and the security, the security agencies are handicapped. The citizens themselves are not willing. They only concern how to blame. For instance, if you see, and I give you a story of about this this uh, Moro Diko incident in London. A woman that saw through the window, he called, he, called the, he called the police. Yeah, that's because they have confidence in the police. Yeah. So here, that's why I did ask you, can tell me if somebody calls the police, or if, if you ask somebody, why don't you call, you, you, you almost know the answer. Uh, so that's you see, like I said, I said, at his reciprocity, the police need to build confidence, and the police need to... Need to so maybe the police also need to reorientate themselves to the values, too. I agree. Of course, that is absolutely correct. The police need to reorientation, re, re, reorientate their values. That's, they are there to serve, to serve and serve with the, based on professional standard, right. both, the, both in the fear of God.
All right. Well, uh, we appreciate uh, both of you for coming on. Mikey Joffo, former director with the Secret Service. He's kept something secret, so he doesn't want to lose, be out of job. Uh, Mr. Lawrence Alobi, former commissioner of police at the SCG. Thank you both for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be back in a moment, and uh, we'll head to Lagos. Don't go away.